Oh my goodness. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Good, <Hey>. e Good evening. <laughs> uh, let me go back to the comments. Here we go. All right. So hello, everybody. Um, for anybody listening in on Paranormal uh, uh, Radio, uh, Radio King Network, um, I'm Taryn, host of Paranormal Brew, and I have Jeff Belanger with me, the nationally known author, writer, all that good fun stuff. Um, and I know recently you've been talking about your Kilimanjaro trip adventure. Yeah. So we can talk about that. But I also just want to, just in case there are people watching that don't know who you are, maybe we can just start where you started and how you got to where you are right now and everything that Jeff does. And how important this hour that you've taken out of your life to spend with me. <laughs> yeah. So um, paranormal guy first, right? I mean, and, and just growing up in an old New England town will do that. And I had friends that thought their houses were haunted. So I was like 10, 11 years old and going to these old homes that uh, people thought were haunted and uh, breaking out the Ouija board at sleepovers, things like that. And I also grew up in the town next to Ed and Lorraine Warren. So I knew them since I was like, you know, like 12, 13 years old. I would go see their library programs, um, you know, every Halloween and just uh, fell in love with the subject. And then I went to school to be a writer and started writing for newspapers. And this is back in the like mid 1990s. And I loved the Halloween feature. And I started going to haunted places, interviewing people that have had experiences and it went up on the website and there were, I was the paper I was working for said, you know, your, your paranormal articles get like 10 times the traffic of everything else combined. And then I started a website called ghostvillage.com back in 1999, 22 years ago, if you're keeping score. And, uh, and from there, it just sort of grew into a career that I could never plan. I mean, I started writing books uh, about haunted places and things like that. And then other aspects of the paranormal. Then I started working in television um, since 2008, since the very first episode of Ghost Adventures. I've been the writer and researcher for the entire series, every episode from then to now. And um, and then I uh, started working on other television shows and appearing on stuff, you know, Shock Docs and, and other series and things like that. And then uh, I also do uh, my own podcast called New England Legends, uh, which is a spinoff of a series we do on PBS and Amazon Prime of the same name. And then uh, I also do a story tour every um well it's all year round now but in the fall it's every single night so starting tomorrow night through november pretty much every single night i'll be uh, either you know talking about haunted places and strange legends in front of live audiences in person or through zoom because these are strange times taryn that we live in absolutely so wait what is it called what story uh, it's, a, it's a, i call it my story tour but like so what i do is i mean every night uh, I'm, I'm, you know, sharing haunts and different legends. Um, and because last year I had the time, <laughs> uh, I realized like, you know, over time I, I've told like over 150 different individual stories. And so I've got this library and every night now that I do um, do these programs, they're different every time. So it's kind of like a band that knows 150 songs. And tonight I'm going to tell, you know, do 10 of them. Um, so I'm always adding to that library and depending on where I am, uh, I might, you know, swap in some local stories and stuff like that. It's been so cool. So since I've really focused on New England for my own work, uh, Ghost Adventures is more like the southeastern, uh, southwestern U.S. And then my work is northeastern. We just have this really cool community of people that have been sharing these stories, like writing in to our, our Facebook group or uh, our website or whatever. And just saying like, hey, in my little town, there's this really quirky tale that we heard as kids. And then we get another story to chase. And I love the way that, you know, these stories uh, kind of connect us to our communities, but also to each other when we share them. Because any paranormal investigation show you've ever seen ever in your whole life, it always started with a story. Yes. Right? It always started with like, oh, did you hear about this, this crazy haunt in this place? No, what happened? Well, you know, during the Civil War, this thing happened. And now it's haunted. And we're going to go look for that ghost. There's always a backstory. And to me, that's the most important part of the equation. Yeah, the history, you know? Yeah, um, well, that's yeah, the stage absolutely. that we set, yeah. the, set the ghosts on, right? You know, well, I've, I've seen some paranormal shows that are just like, 
this place was built in 1843. It's haunted. Let's look for ghosts. And I'm like, that's it? Like, that's all we get? <laughs> <laughs> right. So what what intrigues you most to be able to like go and and chase the story and find more out? Like it's like you said, like it's not just like, oh, yeah, I, I live in a 1800 farmhouse, you know, like it, there obviously has to be something that sticks out or yeah. that is different. Totally. And and it's it's I mean, because, you know, at this point, I've, I've looked into thousands of locations over my 20 plus years of doing this. Um, put them in books on ghost adventures. Like, so all I can say is at some point, there's literally something that turns in my gut when someone, when I hear a story, right. When they're like, okay, old house, old haunted farmhouse. I'm like, okay, not saying it's not interesting. I'm sure it is. But then someone's right. just, there's some twist in there somewhere where I think I could find something out that maybe someone else hasn't, you know, where I can add a new wrinkle to it, where, you know, I want to talk to the people that have seen the, the thing, people who live there, people who work there, like what new angle can I take on this? What, how can I get into this, this haunt unlike someone before? And I don't do that with EMF meters and, you know, audio recorders. I do that with research. I do that with, you know, going through newspaper archives and genealogy and local, you know, libraries and local historical commissions. Like that's, that's how I get into the haunt. I want to know everything in the past. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I love, I love uh, learning um, about the history of places for me. Um, you know, uh, Mark Nesbitt had an interesting story um, about, long story short, the, I believe it was the Daniel Lady Farm. In Been Dennis there. Park. Been there with yeah. Mark, as a matter of Did fact. Did he tell you the story about the blood? Like the, that the is- The on the floor? The blood. And it was like, and he took a sample of it, sent it out. It came back later, like it was human blood, but then it was like gone. Oh, Taryn. So no, the, the, let me set it up. Uh, yeah. So I was there with Mark. And, um, and so as with tons and tons of buildings during the civil war, they become field hospitals, right? I mean, if people are injured, you go to the nearest house and you say, guess what? You're now a field hospital. And they would go to the room with the most light, which is usually the, one of the front parlors and these old wood floors, you could still see like blood stains where, where handprints and things like that. So Mark was saying he was in there at one point and the blood bubbled up like it became liquid. Now, just refresher, right? It was July of 1863, the last time the blood was fresh, you know? And so right. a century and a half later plus, right? Like it's, uh, uh, right you know, it, it suddenly this this bu blood bubbles up. He collects a sample, finds out it's real human blood. Um, and it's, I mean, it's one of these like just weird, crazy stories and Mark's so good. Mark's, you know, Mr. Ghost of Gettysburg. So, um, yeah. yeah, that was a cool night with Mark for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, to me, that is probably one of the most amazing stories I've ever heard because it was gone. Now, you know, wood and the, and the walls and this, I mean, like if there's a blood stain, it's there forever. Like yeah. you, you can see it forever. It, the, the wood just soaks that blood in and it just stays there. And for it to be completely gone, like. I was just like, that's the most amazing, one of the most amazing stories I ever heard. Yeah, no, and Mark's Mark's so good. Like, you know, he he Mark cares so much about the 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 context, right? Because if we just told you there's this place, it's old, and this blood bubbled up, it just doesn't mean as much as like, no, this is Gettysburg, and you know right. what Gettysburg means, right? Like Gettysburg means the Gettysburg Address, and it means that you know tens of thousands are dead, missing, or wounded in the span of three days, right? And and that the the incredible cost. Um, I mean, who doesn't know Gettysburg, right? But right. but the problem with with Gettysburg is that if I tell you, you know, forty thousand plus dead, missing, or wounded, uh, numbers are cold and impersonal. You know, like it doesn't. If you know, you say like three thousand people died on nine eleven. That's that's horrible, but it doesn't right. mean nearly as much as a single person, right? One name, you know, like where we can tell you about someone who was at Gettysburg, who represents a real human being who died serving his cause, serving his, his comrades, whatever. And then you multiply that by 40,000 and it right. really hits home. Then it starts to you realize why this, this place is haunted, why Lincoln said it was haunted in the Gettysburg Address, right? We cannot yep. hollow this ground. The, those that died here did it far beyond our ability to do so, right? I mean, he knew back then this is ho hollowed, sacred ground and still oh, is it, today. 
Yeah. Well, even Chamberlain says it. He they, he said spirits linger so to, to, you know, to help people preserve, you know, to preserve the land and for the people that come after us that are going to come here to, you know, honor those that fought, you know, so even Chamberlain said it. So, yeah. yeah. No. And, and, you know, you've, I know you've been to Gettysburg a bunch. We've, I, we've that's where I met you the first time. Yeah. And, yep. um, and we were there this past summer for that, for the event. And so, when you go walk around some of the battlefields, like I don't, I'm not psychic at all, but you feel something, you know, you absolutely feel something you, oh yeah, um, you, you know, it, it's just this sense. And, and to me, I don't even think you have to call it psychic. I think you could call it just empathy, right? Just like if you walk into a room and you see some people crying and you go, Oh, I mean, you're sad because you're like, yeah. are you okay? What happened? Something has gone wrong. You go to those battlefields and you're like, you, you feel the fear. You feel the rage, you feel the the sadness that's just there forever. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I first went there, actually my mom wanted me to go and I was like, what is in Gettysburg? Like, I was like, so not about it. I was like, no way. I'm like, I, you know, I wasn't, I was so not, the second I got there, it was like, I instantly fell in love. I was like, oh my yeah. God, this place is amazing. I want to move here. Um, I, but, I don't mean to interrupt you or completely throw us so far off course that our mm -hmm. heads will spin for the next two weeks, possibly, you know, going. Are you wearing a new kids on the block t-shirt? Yes. I am such a hardcore fan. I love that. I just saw kids the you know they're all from Boston, right? New kids on the block. They're my boys, 30 years strong. I love them. Love wow. them. Yes. Let, let's unpack this. <laughs> okay. No. So 30 years ago, uh, oh, oh, oh. And KOTV, yes. So um, some people who know me know that uh, I like to play different musical instruments. Um, I have I play guitar. I, I've got a, a banjo lin, half banjo, half mandolin. Amazing. Ukulele. But um, my main axe, as some people know, is, is the didgeridoo. It's not a bong. It's a didgeridoo. <laughs> yeah, okay. I got it in Australia from an Aborigine, right? Like Aboriginal person who taught me how to play it. Taryn, uh, for you tonight and your <gasps> audience, I will play New Kids on the Block. On Stop the it. Review. Stop it. Not only that, name the song. You want the big hit? Name a hit. You know, something that people would know. Give me a hit. Um, Everybody. Know, well, you just do the right stuff. The right stuff. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, everybody right, knows. Ready? We're hanging tough. Everybody knows right stuff or hanging tough. This Pick is one. awesome. Pick one. Uh, right stuff. Do right stuff. Right stuff. Okay. You know? So, it's, you know. Oh, <laughs> this is oh, awesome. Oh, 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 right? Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. oh. <clears throat> Go ahead. Uh. <laughs> Nailed it. Totally. Nailed it. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> the kid has got talent. Why were you? Why haven't they made you the sixth member of NKO TV? I already live up here in the land of the mass holes. That's what they call us, people from Massachusetts. Really? Uh, I, I have no idea, but I'm waiting for the, the phone's probably going to ring while we're during this, and I'll have to go. I'll just have to yeah. get the rehearsal. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm like really bad. I I have met them three times. I am like I go to their concerts. Like I am like diehard. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well, there you go. Now you've heard their song on I the Didgeridoo. Almost love them as much as I love you. Almost. Aww. I mean, it's like, you know, it's close. Very big. Thanks. So have you ever had a paranormal experience? I have. Um, I have. So uh the funny thing is when I first started writing about the paranormal in the mid-90s, I had not. Now I'd been in creepy houses. I had strange feelings, but I'm not talking, you know, like to me, feelings are one thing, but like, you know, I'm talking, see something, hear something. And so uh, the first time it happened for me, I was in Paris, France, actually. And I'd been writing about ghosts for about six years at that point. And not that I thought anyone was lying to me who'd ever told me about their paranormal experience. In fact, the only reason I would ever listen or write it down uh, was because I felt like I believe that you believe, you know, I, I felt like they've been moved by something. So right. I was in, I was in the catacombs of Paris, you know, the tunnels beneath the city where there's literally millions of human skeletons. And I was down there alone walking through these tunnels 
and there's this long straightaway and i see this shadow figure the size of a man who came from the right side and went to the left and then back again and i just froze and i went okay wait a minute you know uh this doesn't happen to me uh, ever and and then i thought okay someone's down here with me uh, there must be a little side tunnel and then i look and there's no side tunnel and then i'm trying to come up with every possible explanation that i can and when you run out of explanations you're kind of left with one word right ghost right, and, right. And it was one of those experiences that took like days and weeks and even months to fully sink in because at that point I had interviewed hundreds of people about their ghost experiences by then. Now it's thousands, but it was hundreds. And I was like, this is what they're talking about. I didn't ask for this. It's, it's like, for me, it's like the equivalent would be, I was somewhere when lightning struck. It happens, right? Lightning right. strikes all the time, all over the world. We know this, right? But right. I don't usually see it happen. And that day I did. And it was not the last time, but it was the first and it was the most memorable. Um, so, yeah, it's happened a handful of times. And I've been in tons of creepy places late at night, early in the morning, battlefields, dungeons in England, old prisons in Australia, um, you know, you name it. And once in a while, you get more than a feeling. You actually see something. Yeah. Um, you know, as I've been doing the show and I have just an array of different guests on skeptics, you know, all kinds of people that people that believe in UFOs, people that are Bigfoot hunters, people that are, I mean, every, everything. Um, so, you know, when you start to think about it, right. So when people say, well, how do you know, you know, because sometimes I can hear something, I hear answers to questions or I hear, uh, you know, a voice. Um, and, you know, a lot of times people are like, well, what if that's your, you know, when you start to like really talk about it and you get deep and you go down this rabbit hole of like, okay, what if that's your thoughts being projected out and, you know, this and that. Um, yeah, and what if? Yeah, what if, way. right? Which I think is still a great discussion to have. Yeah. And it's, and it's possible. However, things like last night I was at work, I was the only one there. And I'm sitting at my desk and I hear this woman, loud as anything, whisper. And it was a whisper, but it was a loud whisper. She said, what is this place? That's all I heard. I was, I was working. So I wasn't thinking about anything. I wasn't. So for me, that's not anything. So what was that? You know what I mean? Like I can see if we're, you're in an investigation and you're. No, I have an answer. You asked me, what was that? And I'm going to give you my professional opinion. Go ahead. Demon. <laughs> that's where i start i like to start with demon and then you know go down from there i can't maybe satan maybe <laughs> satan maybe not a demon maybe you got the dark lord himself i mean i would yeah. bring him up i probably yeah. would do that but I, you know uh, taryn you may not know this about me there's there's that demonologists are a dime a dozen they're everywhere you can't throw a rock in new england without hitting five i am a <laughs> satanologist you uh you call me when you get the big dog and nothing else <laughs> well if he looks like lucifer on the tv show i'm keeping him all to myself nobody's coming nobody's coming near that <laughs> no i want the guy with the horns and the red skin and the bleh. yeah like that's what i'm talking about call me when that happens minor um, demons you know call zaphis he's got that oh somebody's giving you like a little nice Jeff has been our savior during the pandemic with all his virtual Zooms. We love him and appreciate all he does. He's amazing and brought many of us together from all over the world. That was so nice. Pretty Satan. soon we're going to start a cult. So just that's how it starts. It starts with like a couple of Zooms and some drinks to, during a pandemic. And then, you know, you give me power of attorney <laughs> and off we go. <laughs> that's been I, great. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm telling you, like, and the first time I met Jeff, I was just a little enthusiast. Like I was in Gettysburg by myself for a weekend phenomenology. I tell this story all the time. And I've said this to you a thousand times because it's like the best ever, but it was me, you, Bob Merch, Merch and yeah. like a couple of people in the, in the basement of the Farnsworth house. We were down there for 15 minutes and I, I just couldn't, I laughed the entire time. It was the best 15 minute ghost hunt I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Good <laughs> out of history. <laughs> So here's the thing, like, I, I, I think like on a ghost hunt, you love me or you hate me. I don't think there's anyone who's neutral. And because I don't, I can't keep quiet. I'm, I'm incapable of shutting up. 
I can't do it. Like if you're doing an EVP session, I'll ruin it every time. Like you don't want me anywhere near it. And so all I can do is kind of like tell jokes because it's so silly, right? We're in the dark in the basement of a building, like a cool historic building. And I really love being there, like legit. Yeah. And I love people and I love talking to people, but I can't help but crack jokes. It's all I do when I'm uncomfortable. And if you leave your audio recorder unattended near me, oh my God, you're going to get an EVP class A plus plus, right? I'll be like, <laughs> Listen to the New England Legends podcast every Thursday at noon. I can't do it. Download it now. Right? Yes. Oh, I think yes. that was Lincoln. I think Lincoln said that. Oh my God. Yeah. It, it was so, it was just, it was, it was the best. It really was. It goes down in history as like one of my favorite 15 minutes of investigating Wait, ever. Wait, can I just say, like, and you know what's worse? You paid for that. I know I did. I did. I paid for it. You paid for that. And I'm just, and I'm sitting there going, I can't make ghosts appear. Like, this is why I get so uncomfortable on like the public ghost hunts where they're like, Jeff, you stay here and you people come through and they get to investigate with you. And I'm like, I can't make them appear. I can't make any magic happen. And I hate that because I don't want to let anyone down. I'm one of those people that like hates letting people down. And so people come in and I'm like, I can crack jokes and make you laugh, but the ghosts, eh, it's kind of hit or miss. Yeah, um, but you know what, though? It, I mean, things like that and, and people sometimes people are a little bit too. I mean, you, they have to know, like, it, it's not going to happen just because you want it to. Ha you know, I think just doing the investigation part of it for me and being in not knowing that much and being an enthusiast. I'm like, you know, th I that weekend I also investigated with Debbie and Mark Constantino at. Yeah. Uh, and and that was interesting because they actually got an EVP. Oh, <laughs> it was it was very interesting. <laughs> so no, so for those who don't know, um, let's talk about that. Can we? Mm. I mean, should we? Why not? Mm -hmm. What are you drinking, by the way? This is an entire bottle of wine, actually, in one cup, and wow. it's called Twisted Thicket, and it's a Gettysburg wine, ironically. And you're going to drink a whole bottle of wine this hour. Well. I mean, I'm celebrating Jeff coming on my show. So cheers. I don't know if I'm going to drink the whole thing, but uh, it's really, tastes like great things. Drowning your sorrows. I'm not saying you have a problem, but I'm not not saying you have a problem. <laughs> Are we clear? We're clear. Okay. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe 1A at this point. Maybe you're not ready for AA, but like just one of them. Half? Half. Just, yeah. Like... I won't even use AA batteries. That's because uh, no one likes a quitter. So um, anyway, so Mark and Debbie Constantino, for those who don't know, were EVP specialists. I say we're in the past tense because they are both dead right now. Right. Um, it's a horribly tragic, terrible story. I've known them since maybe 2005 uh, was the first time I met them before I worked on uh, Ghost Adventures. And um, uh, they, they were the Bickersons, right? It was sort of cute and funny the way they would get married yeah. forever. Yeah, just bicker with each other. And it was kind of I, funny, but they got crazy EVP, right? Right. And and that's the thing. Like when we were investigating, like you laughed at it because yeah. you did, it didn't feel serious kind well, back of. Then it know? wasn't. You know? Yeah. It, it, it wasn't yet. Like back then it was just the Bickersons. They'd be like, oh, you know. And it was kind of funny and you could laugh at it. But over time, right. it got more and more negative and they got to a really bad, dark place. And those of us that knew them well were I mean, we, we've had conversations where we're like, these are two good people that should be nowhere near each other. Right. Like if, if you're over there and you're over there, then you're both fine. It's when you get together that just horrible things happen. And it's just, you know, the, the chemistry soured over time and. Um, and then tragically it, it ended in a, a double murder suicide and, um, and just awful, like so awful to, to, I remember thinking like, I remember the Zach is the guy that called me, Zach Bagans from ghost adventures. He's like, did you hear what just happened today? And by the way, the anniversary was like two days ago or something. Right. So, yeah. um, so I said, no. And he's like, so, you know, Mark shot Debbie's roommate, shot Debbie and shot himself. And I, and this is what I struggle with, right? So I, I'm like, I know someone that committed a double murder suicide. I knew him for right. years. And that's a really strange thing to come to grips with. 
Now I, we weren't, I weren't real close in the later years. Like we'd talk once in a while, like if they were on ghost adventures, I was coordinating that and talking to them and, you know, we'd see each other at events and I'd, I'd check in with them sort of separately, not on purpose. That's just kind of how it went. It was, it right. was just like Mark would come up and say, Hey, and we'd talk about football and Debbie would come up and say, Hey, and you know, we just chatted and, but it just got, it got to a darker and darker place. And the, the, the question I couldn't help but ask myself still to this day is like, could I have done something? You know yeah, what I mean? Also, I think, I, I think that a lot of people do that even with when people commit suicide, you know, you like, Oh, of course. You know, yeah. Your friends commit suicide and stuff. It's, I mean, well, you it was know, a suicide, right? That's, yeah. That was yeah. yeah it was that, right. Right. But yeah. I think when, when, I hate to use the word successful, but when people successfully carry out this suicide or double murder, suicide, whatever you want to call it, I don't think it's a, most of the times I don't think it's planned. I think it's like something snaps yeah, and it just happens. And yes, you know, they were you know, kind of, you know, oil and vinegar, you know, water and vinegar and, and this and that. And, you know, but, but we, I know tons I of believe people. water and vinegar is a douche, by the way, <laughs> oil and vinegar is what you were looking for. I Go think the, the wine's person. going to my head. The wine is already <laughs> messing up your speech and we're not making light. It's just our way to crack jokes. Um, but it was horrible. Yeah. And, and um, exactly. yeah, it, it, but like, um, so I know someone that committed suicide. I mean, that was part of this equation and, you're right. It's always hard because you're like, could I have done something? Did I, could I have seen it? Because by the time that it happened, you know, those of us that knew them and had seen them in the last year or two, like kind of called each other and were like, you couldn't be totally shocked when you heard this because it was getting really rough between them. Right. And, you know, but whose job is it to step in and say, you two shouldn't, you know, you marry, you husband and wife should not be together. Right. right. And, and they had already sort of split at that point. They were living separately and, you know, the whole thing. And so I, I just remember being so heartbroken all around, you know, like just yeah. it, it's it's so bad when you hear news where just everyone loses, you know, yeah. like there's no winners. Everyone lost uh, such a tragic thing. And then you can't help but just kind of like want to just look out a little more for friends and people you care about and just Absolutely. Check, check in, you know, I mean. Uh, someone said earlier how like, okay, you know, during, during the pandemic, I was doing a bunch of these live streams and the, the, I was having all kinds of paranormal people on, but like, we talked about the paranormal only if there was time, you know, right, 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 right. it was like, we have other things to discuss. And, and the, the big question was, uh, how are you? And, and, and which is funny because that question is one of the biggest pet peeves I have as an American citizen. Like, and, and, and I say that because it's a very American thing to use that as a greeting, right? You go into a store and you say, how you doing? Yeah. How are you? Right? Absolutely. Yep. But you sure do not want the answer. When the clerk asks you from behind the counter, you know, when you're buying your beer or your giant jug of wine, you know, <laughs> how are you doing? How am I doing? I'm buying a, a bottle of wine that I intend to put in a single glass so I can fool myself into thinking I'm only having one glass. Right. So, yeah. uh, so, so like, you know, how you doing? It's not the right greeting because right. The, 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 the only answer to that is fine or good. And how are you? Fine. Good. Great. Let's move past this false thing that we just did. Um, we need a different greeting, but during the pandemic, I meant it. I meant it when we said, like, how are you doing? Like, how how do you get through your day? You know, how are you waking up and facing this bleakness that we're all in? And I really right. wanted to know because I was trying to face it, too. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's all. I, I'll get off my soapbox. But all I ask. No, no, but it's, it's, a, it's an awesome point that who, who said it earlier. And even with now, I mean, I mean, even I mean, like I have six brothers and like, we had to like FaceTime, you know, thank, you know, Thanksgiving. I mean, like yep. if, if we didn't have these things like, you know, stream yards and, and you doing your zoom videos and YouTubes and people like still trying to stay connected and seeing people because we're human, we need to have that connection with people and you know, all that. So I think it, 
it, it saved, it probably saved a lot of people from a, dep a depressed, a depression, you know, if they weren't working and then they weren't, you know what I mean? Cause a lot of people were out of work and they were, you know, struggling. So, you know, things like what you did probably helped and saved a lot of people, you know, a lot of people. And I know that sounds like a really big yeah. statement, but it's true. I mean, you don't know. I mean, you are, you know, a lot of people love you, look up to you. They, they, you know, they, you're an icon. So, nice you know, and you are funny as funny AF. I, I'll say that. You can't swear. <laughs> oh, shit. you can. Yes. No, I'm not swearing. <laughs> I don't have to. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think a lot of these, uh, you know, and it, and, and, and it's helped me. I mean, I've, I definitely have connected with a lot of people, um, that I normally probably wouldn't have. Well, yeah. and, and you know, what's, what's cool about it was that, um, was that we found a way, you know what I mean? It's, it's not the same as in person, but it was something and we found a way. And I love watching people innovate, whether it's, um, you know, how do we, so the speakeasy thing that I was doing, which I haven't done in many, many months, cause I've just been too busy doing other programs. Um, it all started where I called my friends, Brad and Tim in Michigan. And I was just like, do you guys want to have a beer tonight? And, and the answer was like, yes. And of course it was yes, but they're like, okay, how, like, what do you mean? Like, what do we do? And I said, well, there's stream yard and we could like just drink and then let other people watch us drink and right. we'll just talk and drink. Yeah. And that's how it started. And then people are like, this feels like a happy hour. And then people were drinking alone together. <laughs> you <know>? Right. <laughs> they're like, I don't feel like so, you know, drinking alone is a scary thing. Look at you. You're drinking alone right now, but I'm here. So it makes it okay. Yes. I See? know. And what? they're all here. So it and, makes it okay. And everybody. Wait, I got to change uh, my display name. Can I do that while we're going? Like, no, you uh, can do it. I can. Just change it to enabler. Hold on. How do I do that? I don't know I how don't to know. do it. I thought you could I, do it. I don't know. You would have to do it. Yeah. Too much trouble. The joke's passed. Mm. But uh, I feel like I'm enabling you. But either way, you do you. Whatever you got to do to get through the night, I accept it. Um, okay. And that's what we did, right? That's what we did that whole year of, of just like, and remember Gettysburg, that's, that was the first time I was around a big group of people since the pandemic started. And I'm, you know, I'd been vaccinated and I know some of those people were not. And I'm just like, holy crap, is this going to turn into a super spreader? Are people safe? Are we going to get someone sick? All those things. And then, you know, and then suddenly after like a day or two, it just started to feel kind of normal again, which was great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it's just, I, I'm in the medical field, so I have not had a day off. I, you know, last week was my first vacation in almost a year and a half to two years because medical field, you know, you're not, there is no break. There's right. no break. Um, and it is now, you know, becoming a very, it's just becoming very, um, you know, it's becoming very chaotic. I would, I'll, I'll say this, you know, kids going back to school and yeah. they have a sniffle. And they're sending them home and they have to get COVID tested and they're not allowed back in until they get the COVID test. And, you know, parents are like ready to kill everybody. And, you know, it's just insane, you know, yeah. and it's, it's so hence my bottle of wine. Yeah. Um, it's, a it's a glass of wine, Taryn. It's, it's just a glass of wine. It's, it's a glass. And it's, uh, and it still looks half full because I'm an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So what were we talking about? When do you go live, by the way? When do you turn this thing live? Oh, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I so love you. I swear I love you. Any minute now, because because I was going to play the didgeridoo as like an intro, but, um, we'll but let, me know when we, let me know when we start. We're started. Didgeridoo um, it up. I didgeridoo don't. I didgeridoo did. You, you deserve that one glass. Thank you. Yeah, just one, though. Only one. <laughs> It's the glass um, to have when you're having only one. So this past phenom, you, yes. um, now I'm used to, and I know you hate the word lecture. You always, you say, I hate I do. I, other people do lectures. I tell stories and share them myself. Yeah. Um, which is awesome. I, I, I totally, you and you and merch, like I, I could listen to you guys talk all, I mean, his, he, he totally changed my mind about the, the Ouija board 1000%. You know, um, but your last one you saw that you did um, about Kilimanjaro. Um, I don't know if you want to get totally into the entire thing, Whatever but you want. 
whatever you want. I mean, you, I, I mean, I think that that was just, it was probably one of the best um, stories or whatever you want to call it <laughs> at a conference that I have seen. I mean, it was very moving. Um, I remember you had told me that somebody had came up to you afterward and said, what did they say? They thought it was going to be. <laughs> I thought you were talking about ghosts or, or and I, uh, it, and that's okay. No, it's okay. I was, and I think I said, you know, well, I don't know if we always give you what you want. I just hope to give you what you need, you know, and, but, and, uh, but, it, but it was a spirit, but this was a spiritual yeah. level type of a thing, you know what I mean? It, it, not, it wasn't a ghost. It was Casper wasn't coming around the corner and saying boo, you know, but, but that, what that, that's really never really been your thing. I mean, you talk about it, but you're not like talking about, you know, like your ghost investigations and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you briefly want to just yeah, kind of. Can, yeah, whatever you want. I, so um, Kilimanjaro had been on my bucket list for ever, for years and years. I um, I took Swahili in college, which is the language of East Africa, which is a long, weird story. Uh, it's because I failed French. My last name is French, Belanger, if you wanted to pronounce it like, you know, Canada or France. And I failed because like French teachers are evil. And, I, and I'm like, uh, you know, she thought I should be fluent with a name like that. I'm like, ma'am, we've lived here so long that like my great, great grandparents were Belangers, like, you know, like, like fourth or fifth generation American at this point. Like we, it's, there's very little left. Um, so, uh, I failed. I took Swahili. I love the language. I love the teacher. It was amazing. Um, and then Kilimanjaro, it's, it's the tallest peak in Africa. Um, one of the seven summits, 19,341 feet. And it's, it's uh, it's not a technical climb, so you don't need to be, you know, like hanging by ropes and stuff like you can. There's a path you can take to just get yourself to the top. Always wanted to do it. Um, and then it's one of those things that just sort of hangs in the back of your head until something brings it to the forefront. And what happened was back in 2013, my brother in law, Chris, uh, had a diagnosis that nobody saw coming. He's 44 years old and was having some stomach problems, was losing some weight. And he went to the doctor and they ran tests and more tests. And he gets a phone call from his doctor who says, come down here right now. Just stop what you're doing, hang up the phone and come down here. And um, he's a school principal. So he had to literally walk out of the school day. And he gets to the doctor and the doctor tells him, you have stage four cancer. It's fully metastasized. There's tumors everywhere. And you've got 18 to 24 months to live. Mm. And all of us were just like, what you know 44 years old and you went from like some stomach issues to a death sentence right my nephew's three at the time my sister's like well, i'm gonna you know be a widow and and have to raise our kid alone and everything was just like the world changed for us like you know yeah. when, you know when you're in a when it happens in your family like it, the world is entirely different now what does this mean you know and yep um, and Chris, because of my paranormal work, Chris and I got a lot closer. I mean, he, he could talk to me about the afterlife and dying. And he was, he was not an atheist when I met him, but close, you know? Um, and the whole thing became so spiritual for him and he shared it all with me right up to the end, uh, including like, you know, he was having out of body experiences in his final days and he was telling me about them and, uh, just, we had such profound conversations and, and, um, by the time he died, like he and I were just so much closer than we ever would have been had this right. not happened mm -hmm. and which made it so much harder, but almost kind of like so much more beautiful, right? Better to have loved and lost, right? Than never to have loved at all. And so, um, so, so he passed away in December of 2015 and, uh, and you know, you, you have to go on, you have to keep moving and, uh, be supportive and do what you can. And, um, it was about six months later, I was at a, a paranormal event doing a fundraiser for this old historic building in Massachusetts. And uh, a woman walked up to me who I'd known. She worked for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And I've done fundraisers for them in the past and, you know, helped raise money. And she's like, we got a new program coming up, Jeff. I think you'll love it. And I was like, oh, I'm so busy, Amy, but, you know, I'll help if I can. And she said, we're going to climb Mount Kilimanjaro to raise money to fight cancer. And like, just, you know, like the, the record scratched in the movie, you know, and I think my calendar just cleared. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, like, like everyone around me froze in place, you know, and, uh, and it was just me and her. And I said, Kilimanjaro. And uh -huh. I said, and then I said, when she's like, we're going to go in March, 2017. And I'm like, 
that's pretty much a, a good time for me usually you know like that's a it's not october right and and then i was like oh my god you know it's so rare the universe holds something out on a golden platter for you you know to say like do this in memory of your brother-in-law his honor raise money for cancer cross this off your bucket list i'm just a couple years younger than him at this point and i was just like yeah amy i'm in and yeah. uh, and i i raised money and people were so generous like so many people donated uh, over seventeen thousand dollars i was That's able to raise so awesome yeah and and then train i met uh you know five of us from new england all joined this this team and none of us knew each other before and we trained all through the winter all through the the mountains of new hampshire and and then got to go have this experience and it was so life-changing for me not just physically difficult and and challenging but like you know it, it's six days to the top two days back down no no wi-fi no internet no cell phones you know just just unplugged and and making your way to you know from the bottom it's summer because you're in a you're near the equator and it's, it's right you know it's always warm to brisk and then at the top it's literally an arctic tundra complete with you know glaciers and uh just to have that experience and, and barely be able to breathe and, and yeah i remember you talking about that part like the whole time i i was literally you were so detailed like i was picturing the entire thing and i'm like there's no way i would have been able to do that like in my head i'm like i would have been like there's no way you don't you say that but i mean it's gradual right you don't get thrown up there and um and i but i also feel like what i love about it too is that I mean, the mountain's a metaphor for anything, you know, anything can be a metaphor, a, a mountain, right? You know, trying to quit smoking or trying to like get over a breakup or trying to like, you know, get a new job. Like these are all mountains that we have to climb. But but this one was literal, which sort of made it simpler in a way, you know, just like, OK, how do you climb a mountain? Well, you just take one step and then another. There's no other way. Like, that's that's how all of them are climbed. You know, you just you do one and then another step and another step. And eventually when you can't go any higher you realize you've reached the halfway point, <laughs> you know, yeah. like that's halfway. You got to get back down. And it was such an amazing lesson. And um, there's a, there's a word for the top of the mountain. That means where uh, it's the house of God or where God dwells because the, the Messiah and the Chaga people that live around the mountain believe that uh, only those who are worthy are allowed up there. And by the time I got to the rim of the volcano, the very edge, and the sun was coming up. It had just broken through the clouds, the clouds that are like thousands of feet below us. Like that's how high up we are. Um, I mean, I felt Chris with me in that moment. I felt this huge, um, awesome presence all around me. And it was just, even though there was like another 500 vertical feet, another like three quarters of a mile, another hour to go. It was this moment that was just like, this is done. I'm going to make it. There's no question. It's an absolute foregone conclusion. I just have to finish. And I, I hold on to that sunrise. I hold on to that, uh, that experience to this day. Cause I still have crappy days. And, yeah. and I think about like, no matter how crappy the day gets, the sun rises again tomorrow and we get another shot at this, you know, mm -hmm. we get, we get to try again. And yeah. sometimes you got to just write the day off. Yeah. You know, I think it's I think it's in our nature to sort of wait for monumental days like New Year's Day. I'm going to make resolutions or my birthday. I'm going to start doing this or first of the month. Like you don't need any of that. Tomorrow is fine for for right. whatever thing you have in mind. Tomorrow is just fine. The sun comes up. You get a brand new start. Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. And that and then to me, that was very and there was like a lot of things like and I'm sure there was a lot of people in the audience that probably could have related, you know, to, you know, my father had leukemia. I used, I did walks for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. I remember when you, you say in a couple years, you know, my dad was 44 when he was diagnosed with his leukemia. I'm 43. So I like, now I'm like relating to his life. Like he was really only, like I knew he was young, but now I can relate to how young he was. Like, you know, he had this, like yeah. his whole life ahead of him. Right. I mean, so um the story was amazing yeah thank you and, yeah and uh you know it, it definitely was it, it definitely is different for you um but it was it was awesome yeah right? thanks it really was and i and i and i'm you know happy that you shared it with everybody yeah I, and I, I sort of i mean it's it's that's also kind of my nature you know is to um 
uh, find stories, share them. You know, I mean, they don't they don't do me any good bottled up inside. And I'm 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 a sharer. I wear it on my sleeve. I I'm an open book when it comes to just about anything. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. and because I, I kind of feel like we're all trying to muddle through this human experience. I, I, a big part of the reason I'm so into ghosts and legends, right? It's just like because I know history's happened before. <laughs> You know, yeah. let me learn something from it. I just keep making mistake after mistake. You know, maybe, maybe if I if I find the right story, I'll I'll do a little better tomorrow. <laughs> you know, if I, uh, you know, we we learn a little bit from the past, and and that's the thing about history is that it does repeat, and it's um it's just one of those things where, uh, I I found such connection, um, not just with dead people, you know, from long ago, but with living people like you when yeah. we're in the basement. Talking about talking to the, the dark air, saying like, "Hey, is there anyone here with us?" You actually ask if there is anybody there right now. Give us a little Gettysburg address, and you started doing some fart machine on your phone, and you know that sounds like me. <laughs> I don't remember that specifically, but I'm definitely not calling you a liar. <laughs> no, it was great. I'm telling yeah. you, it was, it, and you know what it is? It, it left such an impression. Like, I mean, like to this I day, <laughs> to this day, I'm like, never so ghost hunt with him again. Yeah. <laughs> Note to self. Dear diary, never do this again with Jeff. Check. Yeah. Huh. No, that's smart. That's no, you know, you know what you, you should add, you should add comedian to your resume. <laughs> uh, I'm not even kidding you. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, so the other thing too is, I mean, if you were a ghost and you're in some stuffy old building and someone's like, what year did you die? Who's the president <laughs> right now? Right. Or like, would you, the guy with the fart piano on his phone, would you be like, what the hell is, I mean, I'd be more intrigued by that, but that's me. I'm immature. <laughs> no, I admit it's it. so true. Yeah. I would be drawn like a moth to flames. Yeah. Right? Like the guy with the fart jokes. I'd be like, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. It was, I'm sorry. It was just, it was great. I, yeah. I, I, I tried, I think I, I think I, I sent it to Bob and it was like such a crappy recording because it was like a really crappy old recording, but I sent it to him and he was like, oh my God, this is great. It, like he was like listening to it. It was literally, he, I mean, you are like awesome <laughs> as always. I mean, like, I, <laughs> I was like, um, so you're still doing all these things. Yeah. Like, I mean, just like totally just like still ghost adventuring. You're still the legend trip. Oh, I have this. What do you got? Oh, you know what? I love that book. Didn't do very I well. I love this book. It didn't do well, and I'll tell you why. Because no one I understands the title. I love this book. Thank you. And I got that one. Yes, too. I wrote the forward to that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love these books. And it yeah. even, you know, it comes with, I got the handy dandy little. Which I, there's no such thing as a DVD player anymore. It's yeah. all streaming, but whatever. But you know what? I put a post up the other day because I'm moving and I have all these DVDs and I'm like, what do I do with them? Do I sell them? Do I throw them out? Do I, everybody's like, keep them. I have a DVD player. Yeah. For now. For now. Yeah. No, I, 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 um, I, I was in the same boat. Like I, I bought it. I got like a super cheap DVD player cause I still have a few that I might want to watch. And so I, I've got one, even though like I, it's used maybe like three times a year at Christmas when I want to watch Christmas specials that I have on DVD and that's about it. Um, John says Jeff loves dad jokes. It's true. Uh, why couldn't the toilet paper cross the road? I don't know. Cause it got stuck in a crack. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's usually my closer. So don't ask for another one. All right, no. <laughs> that's where you're like, good night. Good night. Tip your waiters. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> that's... I can't. Mm-hmm. I knew I like see I really and then I have ADD so bad and then like let's ride bikes yeah it's like squirrel whatever I mean like, I'm all over the place glass of wine Woo. yeah yeah which is still half full half full good yeah very optimistic I am stop 
like this when the uh when uh when the show ends you're gonna just be like you're gonna close this thing down and you're gonna chug that and be like it was supposed to be a paranormal show it was i <laughs> something went i think about the time we did new kids on the block on didgeridoo it's just that's we jumped the shark and that's that's the paranormal brew there we're asking for didgeridoo closer yeah that's uh i don't know i i feel like it you know it can be overdone <laughs> oh, I don't know. I you really you you like nailed it. I mean, that was amazing. Yeah. Well, you know when when like you're at like some fancy cocktail party and you see me walk in with the didgeridoo, and you're like, oh crap. Didgeridoo. Yeah. <laughs> you has a didgeridoo. Yeah. They're like, oh Jeff, are you gonna play? Yes. I I thought I would play as some Christmas carols at this this holiday party. And at first everybody laughs, but then a half hour later they're like, please stop. No, right? no, no. Never invite him again. Next, if you're gonna be at Phenom next year. You are totally didgeridooing. Oh. Yeah. yeah. At the karaoke? Yeah. Just yeah. get on there and didgeridoo. Yeah. All right. Well, I think not? everybody will love it. We'll start a band of just misfits. I'll have my new kids on the black shirt on. Yes. Yeah. Right? That'd be good. And totally. Yeah. Ghost. <laughs> it's it's oh, funny. Oh, Ghostbusters. Yeah. So it, it's, it's funny to see... Uh, um, when people are using StreamYard, it, it's it's difficult. By the way, I get it. So you're trying to be engaged in a conversation and go looking at the. I, I know, oh, I know, because I, I want to make sure, you, it, like, if anybody has a question. I mean, everybody's just kind of like just like you know commenting, but I always want to make sure if anybody had a question Questions. for you. You know, because me as an interviewer, I'm like not asking you any questions. I'm just kind of like we're just having I'm, a combo. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for questions. Like, go. Let's start. <laughs> go <sighs> okay what do you have coming up next any events where you're going to be at i'm sorry i know it's normal but i mean i just every night every night i got something coming up uh mm -hmm. every single night no joke starting tomorrow um you got to go to my website which is my name jeff and um some of them are virtual, so you can attend from anywhere, and most of them are free, sponsored by the various libraries and organizations that are hosting me. Um, some of them are in person. I'll be uh, around New England. I'll be in Connecticut. I'll be in New Hampshire. I'm in Connecticut Friday night. Uh, I miss people so much. So even though, like, you know, some places we got to wear masks, it is what it is. I'm just grateful to, like, be in front of people because as much as I appreciate that we can connect, it's really hard to do these things. Like the Kilimanjaro program you saw. Mm -hmm. I mean, I felt everybody's energy. I felt them like crying and stuff and that gets to me and then it just goes back and forth and it's amazing. It's not quite the same when you're looking at this little dot and like, <laughs> you know, trying to like bring the pain for that. Yeah. Um, but now here. Now you're, you're out of questions. That was the yeah. only one you had. What's no, I on? totally oh. it. I totally had a question in my head. I have ADD so bad. And then Family. like the second it's something I and then it's like I go off the, the off over here, you know? Yeah. No, it's um, okay. Yeah, I totally just like pink. Take your um time. it can be let's ask non-paranormal questions, like you know, favorite foods. I what what's your favorite food? Me? Yeah, like go to. You're like, I can never say no to. Pasta or French fries. Okay. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. How about you? Uh, you know, pizza. Like, oh, I love pizza. Even even bad pizza, I'd still be like mm. Domino's. I'd be like, Ugh, okay. I call it Domino Blows. By the yeah, way, yeah, it's it's if something went wrong. If you're no offense to our friends that work there and sponsor your show, but sure, uh, right. But um, yeah, <laughs> something went wrong. If you're having Domino's, I guess. Um, I know that when I'm on a diet, the one thing I crave is pizza. Oh, that's it. I don't the carbs, crave. the cheese, the meats. It's so good. Everything. Yeah. Um. Oh, somebody's telling me to blame it on the wine. I do. So yeah. I do have a question though. When, oh. you, when you write for a show. Yes. Okay. Like, what are you writing? Are you writing? So, what they dude, say? dude, dude, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. That's me. I wrote that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I thought you were telling me to shut up. No, I wasn't telling you to shut up. I was quoting. <laughs> like, it's my show. I'll mute you. Like, you should have just muted me right there. Um, no, no, no. So, like, with Ghost Adventures, uh, the, the very beginning of the show is, like, the historical setup. 
where we learn about the history of the place. We meet the people that have had experiences and we kind of like set the stage. And that's the part I work on. I give them all that research. I give them sort of like bullet points to hit the historical points of, of where we are and why we're there. Um, once the ghost investigation starts on ghost adventures, um, it goes from being a produced show to here's the ghost hunt. The lights are out. We got cameras rolling all over. And now you're seeing like the highlight of a, of an evening investigation. And so, so the part that's written is just the beginning, uh, where we kind of get there and set the thing up and it's not totally written. I mean, Zach's off the cuff all the time, you know, especially right. during his interviews. So, so the, the writing part is really just like, you know, there's voiceovers and things, stuff that, that has to set the stage for where we are. And that's, that's the stuff I give them. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, cause I, I, I was like, how do you write for, like, what do you write? Like, I, I don't, so I'm, I'm glad that we, I yeah. asked that question because I've always wondered, like you, at the end of a reality show, it's like, you know, writer. And I'm like, how do you write for reality? Like, what is it that you're writing? You know what I mean? If it's, yeah supposed to be reality or it's supposed to be you know uh, it's like what are they writing and but that makes sense i mean you know, somebody has to do but so they so how how do they find you you i mean like, so the show's like i'm I need, right here <laughs> like so the show's like oh we need somebody to do the research yeah so uh uh it actually back in 2008 uh, the the Ghost Adventures had that documentary that came out and you may have seen it on sci-fi. I didn't work on that at all. That, that was before me. But once they got the, the series on Travel Channel, they said, we need someone to help us find locations, help us do the history, and then you know give it to us so we can go in and investigate. And so Zach knew Dave Schrader. Um, Schrader's like, oh, you want Jeff? He's written a ton of books on haunted places, knows haunts everywhere. Zach called me and said, all right, we want you. And, um, and I said, oh, you know, it was supposed to just be eight episodes. That's it. And I was like, oh, well, I've, I've written for magazines, for newspapers, for the web, for books. Um, TVs would be a new medium for me. Like, well, that sounds interesting. Let's do it. And so uh, I did. And it was a ton of work. Like, it was, it was cool to be there from the beginning and, like, literally help build a show. Like, you know, when you're starting, like, well, what does it look like? You, you know, yeah. like, someone's got to think about all that stuff. And so, um, so it kind of came together. And then it was a lot of work, but it was it was really cool. And then the, the episodes started to air and I thought we were done. I'm like, OK, uh, eight episodes. It took like a couple of months to film all those. And I'm like, well, that was cool. On to the next thing. And then they aired and they were popular. And the Travel Channel said, how fast can you guys get back to work? And uh, we were like, I guess tomorrow. And that was the last day off. 2008. <laughs> so uh, do, you, do you have to go to when they're filming? You have to go. So sometimes, um, uh, you know, like, especially when we're doing mini series and stuff like that, and we really got to get in deeper, but a lot of times I can do it remotely. I can do it. Um, you know, we've got ac online access to some really great resources that we pay for, you know, newspaper archives and genealogy and stuff like that. And then um, you know, a lot of it can be done by phone. So yeah, sometimes if it's called for, I'll go there ahead of time, but, uh, otherwise it's, it's pretty much remote. So you find the information and then does it get sent to the producers? Like you write it and it get, just gets sent to the producers or is yes. it like a teleconference where everybody's talking about it and say, yeah, this is what I found. And so I give them like an episode Bible almost. So, um, you know, all the historic points, especially like people who have died there, newspaper clips, all that stuff goes in this one document, uh, our interviews. So I, anybody that's ever been on the show, I've interviewed them first and I get the bullet points because we do reenactments and our producers need to prepare for that. So if it's like, you know, a man in a, a, a union blue civil war uniform comes down the stairs and disappears, they know they're going to need an actor for that. We do reenactments. There's no, it's, it's not faking it. It's obvious, right? When you right, watch right, right, right. So like, so I'm giving all those notes to the producers ahead of time. Like, here's what this person's going to say when we interview them. Um, you know, here's what happened here historically. Here's, you know, some sound bites we could use to sort of transition and introduce the place. And then that's all given to them. And then Zach reads it, the producers read it, and they they get to work in the field. And they, they always have that for reference if they're looking for like, oh, was it, what room did that person die in? It's in the notes, you know, so okay. I make sure they have everything they need historically and that I've found people that can share their ghost experiences uh, in these locations. Right. There was one episode. I'll never forget it because it was literally like, I couldn't believe it. Zach 
knocked on the door and, and I don't remember where it was at knocks on the door to get, I guess he was like lived in the town his whole life. So he had like a lot of information. So he knocks on the door and the guy was, I, I don't know. He was probably 80, 90 years old. I don't know. And he knocks on the door and the guy's like talking to him and he goes, okay. <laughs> and he fall, falls backwards and Zach like helps him up and puts him. And then he falls into the rocking chair on the front porch. I was like, I can't believe they left that in there. <laughs> that was uh, that was Moundsville Penitentiary, oh and that was God. season one. And that guy lived across the street from the penitentiary. Yeah. And um, and uh, on the one hand, yeah, like, but the the, the crazy thing is like that's real, <laughs> right? Like he was like the sweetest know. little guy, and he, yeah. he was just like, yeah. "See you just later." <laughs> fell over. He just <laughs> fell over. I know, and. Like, and I think at that point, you're almost obligated to show he was okay. Yeah, you know? I know, I know. You because know? of course, everybody's been like, ah, ah, ah. Yeah, right. So anyway, no, I mean, that, it, people are amazing, you know, and I think so entertaining. And I don't mean laughing at them. I just mean like, we're all so quirky and different and have such different life experiences and, and so much to share. And uh, some of the characters I've met working on that show, people that are just like, you're like, man. Uh, I think you're a little bit crazy. And I mean that with love. Like I'm not, I'm right. not, I don't mean that insulting. I just mean like, no legit when this is over, we should, we should probably go to a bar together. Yeah. You know? absolutely. <laughs> like yeah. like I, I have questions. We should hang out. Yeah. Um, but it's, but that's, that's part of the fun of it. Um, I, I apologize if I'm saying this, na the name wrong. I want to say Shay, but maybe Shah. it's Shah. Shah. Yeah. Um, Jeff, if you could contact anyone who has died, who would it be and what would you ask? Mm. So, you know, there's always family that's interesting, but I kind of feel like we should leave family alone because, um, you know, uh, it's, it's too too difficult and painful. But I, I always come back to Lincoln, you know, Abe Lincoln, because I think he's just he's such an iconic American figure. And um, yeah. he's 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 actually of all the presidents like him in Washington. You know what I mean? Like. They're almost into like deity status, you know, and just yeah. to, I just would have questions. Lincoln seemed Lincoln more than anyone. Just the incredible. He's so quotable. Oh, you OK. Know? Wait, I'm glad you brought that up. Oh, OK. Oh, good night. Bye. I guess this no, is no, fun. No. that's a hell roll credits. Oh, look at that. The Lincoln, wit the and wisdom oh, of yeah. Abraham Lincoln. Uh, You know, like it's it's I feel like I mean, imagine him today. You know, like, I you mean, would, like you would just put him on 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 the the twenty four seven news channels and be like, okay, uh, Florida man, you know, is on crack and jumps through window. Lincoln, right? And like, just comment, <laughs> give us something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Florida man is, uh, you know how he is. He gets crack in him and he'll do anything. You know. <laughs> like, you know? Do you think he would change his outfit? No, please don't. God, no, no. That's. I mean, I mean, every picture he's wearing the same exact thing. Right. Yeah, we need to. We need the hat. We need the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, that's how they dressed. But um, no, I, I just think he's such an interesting, dynamic character from history and would just be like a barrel of laughs to uh, to hang out with. And and uh, one of the I mean, and what I loved about him, too, is if you read his letters and his speeches, I feel like he was just so transparent, you know, in a good way. Like he would just be like, this is what I think. This is what right. I feel. And here it is. Like he was definitely ahead of his time. Yeah. Like, like stuff okay. like that you can call me crazy. I don't care. Like I had this dream and it was prophetic and I thought I, I, I died in it. And I thought, you know, I saw this and, and just the, his observations, I just thought were, were just so great. I mean, he, if not, if, if he was around today, he probably would have been a stand up comic, right? Like a really yeah. successful. Oh one, right? yeah, for like, sure. He'd be like politics. Screw that. You know, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's do the circuit, you know? <laughs> Oh, there he is. <laughs> Four score there he is. and seven beers ago. Taryn started his. My glass is still drink. half full. Half full. Well done. Well done. Um, did you see the, what was the movie? Um, Lincoln. The Vampire Slayer, though? The, the... No, I, I haven't. And, and You I, have I'm, to see it. You have I'm to embarrassed. See it. No, I should. You're right. I'm I totally was like, this is going to be so corny. But oh, yeah. it was actually really good. So sometimes, sometimes a movie with a with a title uh, lets you know to have your expectations low, 
Right. And and then you'll they'll only be exceeded, right? So like let me another example. I think did you ever see the movie Dude, where's my car? Yes. My expectations could not have been any lower when I put that movie on. <laughs> it's so great. And, and by the end, I was like, this wasn't half bad. Right. <laughs> if it was called like greatest comedy of our time, right. I would have been like, this sucked. This was <laughs> right. a crash. This was a total crap, right? And uh so anyway, I think like when you call it Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer, you're like, this is going to be silly. Yeah, and, I thought it was yeah. going to be horrible. But I was like, I have to see it, right? But some of the scenes were like, oh, you know, you know Civil War, this and that. So, of course, I'm like, yeah, I got to watch it. And and the way they intertwine the the real history into yeah. the the fiction, like it, I was like, wow. I was like, this is awesome. And the acting was good. Of course. So, I mean, I can only imagine trying out for that part. <laughs> like, oh, this is going to make my career. The Vampire Slayer. I'm ready. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it was just amazing. It's really good. You have to watch it, and then you have to you have to let me know what you thought. All right. I'm on it. I did. Oh, he's. I must be in my in the minor. I, he didn't care for Abraham Lincoln. The I thought it was good. I mean, you have to take it for and, what it and is. And by the way, you don't know this, but John is a movie guy. Yeah, like it's it's kind of his thing, like seeing movies and making comments. So, uh, anyway, I, I I I I'll listen to both of you, but I really should watch it. I feel like it's part of the the cultural narrative, and I've missed it. Yeah, well, especially being a Abraham Lincoln fan and and a vampire fan, to be perfectly honest. Me too. If you could be a werewolf or a vampire, I will always choose vampire. You know what? The only reason I might go werewolf is because I don't think I want to be immortal. At some point, I want the story to end. No, oh, I love the vampire lifestyle. They like party and, you know, do do things that are fun. And I mean, aside from the blood stuff, other than that, like they they all they're all hot and they're all like you know everybody's having fun and partying together and it's just like yeah I like this. They're they, you know, yeah. I'm a vampire all the way. Fair I enough. couldn't deal with all the hair of the werewolf. Like I'm just. Yeah. Well, we all have our thing. There's so many, there, all these people are asking questions now. See, um, how is Ziggy? Ziggy is my new bird. He's a, uh, he's oh. totally adorable. I'll show you a picture. He, um, so, uh, my family, we're bird people. Um, I'm allergic to cats and dogs. So oh, um, no, no, don't be sorry. Like we have Ziggy and, um, he's like just totally adorable. He's a cockatiel and we just got him. Oh my gosh! Does he talk? Like does well, he? He's only he's he's still a baby, but um, you know we'll find out. Um, the last bird I had talked, which is kind of a mind bender. The first time you hear a bird talk, I want uh, an African gray so bad because I think no, you don't. Like... <laughs> you're by the way, you're way too old to get an African yeah. gray. Oh yeah, they, they were like eighty years. They lived yeah, like eighty I mean, years. It it will outlive you by a long shot. And then what do you do with it? It's just not fair to someone else in your family. You know? <laughs> I have like seventeen nieces and nephews. I'm like one of them can have it. Yeah. Like you gotta get an African gray when you're like 10 and that's a lifelong <laughs> commitment, you know? <laughs> oh my god yeah so ziggy's good he's uh he's only been with us like a week and a half but um but we love him already he's adorable very tame very sweet and um he's singing i think he speaks mandarin but we don't speak that so we're gonna work on his english oh my gosh really how old is he he doesn't really speak mandarin taryn i'm joking well, I'm very, you know, I believe you. <laughs> See, you did. I mean, like every time you tell me something, I'm like, really? You're like, yeah. no. <laughs> no, no. no. We're, we, he just speaks bird right now. We're working on human. Uh, I'd say both. Yes. Really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, before yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody's, Hello. everybody's. Oh, teach Ziggy Swahili. Who Jumbo? Who Jumbo Ziggy? Yeah. And all I remember is you saying Rafiki, and I remember that from Lion King. Friend. Rafiki means friend. Yeah, that was his yeah. name. Yeah. Um, so the, but everybody else is saying they liked it. So you have you just have to watch the movie. I'm time. in. I I've, I'm convinced your endorsement is glowing. I'm ready to watch it. <laughs> yes. John Gately be damned. John, I'm gonna watch it and then we'll have words. Maybe I'll agree with you though, John. Uh, when it's yeah. when it's over, I might be like, you know what, you're right, or I might be like, no, Taryn, you're right. We'll see. 
All right, John, it's on. It's me, on. It's, it's me and him. And you're the tiebreaker. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, I could keep talking. You could keep drinking too. It's still half full. It's like yeah. it's a never ending glass. I mean, right. I, I, it just doesn't end. Um, but I appreciate you coming on. It's, I don't have to go anywhere. You're the busy one. So yes. no, thank I haven't eaten dinner yet. So there's that. Oh my but, gosh, please. Yes, you have to. But I, thank you for doing, I'm sorry it took so long to make this magic happen, but um, I'm glad we got to squeeze it in before the, uh, the, the thrill ride that is the fall for me. Yes. And, and make sure, I mean, everybody, um, all oh, that was nice. Thank you. This was fun. Glad I caught it. Yeah. There's never a dull moment with Jeff Belanger or how did you say it in, what did you say? Front, he was French. If you wanted to go en Francais, but you know, Belanger's fine. Just Jeff is okay. Whatever. You know, oh, but before that I used to, I used to say Ballinger. Yeah. I've been called everything. It's okay. Like I, you know, I get it. I'm not a Smith or a Jones. You know? Hey, I have one of those names. People are like, you know, what I do correct people now is when they say Karen. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. No. Before no, no. I used to not care. I was, I wouldn't correct anybody. But when they say Karen, I'm like, uh uh, with a T. I'm no yeah, Karen. Right. No offense to any Karens out there. None. None. No, of course. But like, you know, you should, you should uh, be who you are at all costs for sure. Glad I caught this. This was tons of guns. I think she means fame. Fun. Right. Right. Aww. Well, thanks, um, hey, everybody. But thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Jeff, so much. I, I was looking forward to this. I'm so excited that you came on. And, you know, looking forward to whenever um, we're going to have um, a 15-minute ghost investigation in, in the basement of a <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. That I can ruin. That would be great. It would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> My once-in-a-lifetime shot at getting in, like, you know, this, this haunted <laughs> building, and uh, you just make fart jokes in the corner. That's great. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you so much and good luck with everything. And thank you for sharing your Kilimanjaro story and um, lots of love to you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Taryn. Good seeing you. You too. Talk soon. Bye. Bye.